TNT Sports welcomes you to Darlington for the 53rd running of the Mountain Dew Southern 500. This is a place where NASCAR's past challenges its present. Cars are faster and technology is better, but the track is a throwback, a racing relic virtually untouched and untamed for 50 years. Welcome back to Darlington. It has been raining here throughout the morning. We have jet dryers out on the track, obviously attempting to dry the racing surface. It is drizzling a little bit right now. It rained most of the morning here in Darlington, stopped about 11 o'clock, and once again, the rain kicked in about noon. But NASCAR did an excellent job in making sure we got halfway in the Bush Series here on Saturday, and now they're working just as hard to make sure we can get the entire 500 miles in in the Southern 500 this afternoon. So we got our fingers crossed. There is rain in the area. We're hoping that will move out. There is some clear dry weather behind this drizzle. So again, we've got our fingers crossed. And now, speaking of untamed, here are three guys that monopolized this network for seven and a half hours yesterday and are ready to go again today. Alan, Wally, and Benny. Good luck, guys. We'll be down here if you need us. Yeah, Jerry Lewis <laughs> has got nothing on us. We're doing a racing telethon on Labor Day weekend. Benny Parsons won here at Darlington in 1978. Two words for you, BP. Tough track. Oh, boy, is it ever. This racetrack has never been wide. It's always been very narrow. In the late 60s, they did widen the racetrack at some, and it worked okay for a while. But in the late 60s, the speeds were around in the 140-mile-per-hour range. Now we see the speeds up around 170 in qualifying. They do slow down to the 150s, but the racetrack is still a change, still the same. As the cars go faster, the more narrow the groove becomes. And right now, it's a very narrow racetrack for all these cars to try to get around. Yes, Alan, it's a very tough racetrack. Yeah, and we always come to Darlington, you always hear the term race to racetrack. And what that means is, that's what exactly you do. You race the racetrack. You'll see a lot of guys going into one and two sideways. And as they approach one, the car on the outside really needs to back off and let that inside car go because that inside car is going to slide up and make you a sandwich if you don't let them go. So you really concentrate on just keeping smooth. You know, Jeff Burton was great about the tire management. You can't manage tires here. You have to have a good race car, but you have to be very patient and take care of your equipment. Let's talk some more about tires and tire management and racing the racetrack. I'll bet Benny's got a little thunder motion on just that topic. All right, Alan, let's do that. Let's go inside EA Sports Thunder Motion. Wally talked about it. Here's how you make a pass at Darlington. Inside our TNT Pontiac. We pull up alongside Jeff Gordon as we come off the corner. We have position on him. When we get down to turn one, Gordon backs off. I take the TNT car down in the corner. He follows me. Now here's what not to do. Don't go in the corner side by side, side by side, because that is about always the end result. And we talk about tires. I'm out here on worn tires. Wally been out here 50 or 60 left. I need some tires. EP, watch out. I got fresh tires and I'm gonna be about two seconds a lap quicker than you, so see you later. You better get in or I'm gonna leave you. Tires, tire management, whoever plays the game best may hold the trophy at the end of the day here in Darlington. We've had problems with the weather all weekend. Qualifying rained out on Friday. If you were with us for our telethon yesterday, struggles with the NASCAR Bush Series race in the rain, and again here today. How sensitive to this racetrack are the setups where weather is concerned? You know, someplace like Charlotte, a driver's praying for a cloud before his qualifying lap. What about here? Is this changing weather today going to be a big problem for the teams? I don't think so. I think as long as it stays overcast, they're going to be okay. The worst thing that can happen is that this racetrack is sun just beating down on the racetrack because it makes it so slippery. These guys can really never simulate racing conditions under the sun. But yesterday, they practiced under these kind of conditions. If the clouds stay there today and they've been here for a week, I don't know why they would leave today. But if they do, I think the drivers and teams will be okay. Yeah, and I agree with that. Benny's completely right. It's more about the temperature than it is anything else. This track just takes the rubber off the tires. Now, even when you get rubber built up on the racetrack, that doesn't really save your tires. So the biggest thing is going to be watching that temperature. And I think a lot of guys are also going to be watching that radar screen because if, if it is a shortened race, there's a lot of strategy that comes on whether to make that last pit because if it's shortened by rain, you may be a hero. And yet, if you don't stop for tires and they go back racing... And you're a zero. And you're a zero. <laughs> you're going right to the back. All right, we remain hopeful here at Darlington. They're making an effort to dry the track. It's all up to whether or not that precipitation will stop falling. Stay with us more when we come back. How's that? So much of the history of the sport has been written here at Darlington, not all of it pleasant. This was a terrible crash that Richard Petty suffered here back in 1970. Part of the terrible part of the crash was the fact that Petty was exposed after the car was ripped apart in that vicious accident, but 
as through the history of the sport, problems have led to innovations in the name of safety. BP's at our Team Caliber 360 racer to show us what came of that Richard Petty crash, Benny. The next time that Richard Petty showed up at a racetrack, he had a window net in the driver's window so that his arm would not come out of the car. To get out of the car, you simply pull it out, you pull out of the car. But the next NASCAR saw that and said, you know, that's a, such a great idea. The next race, every team had to have a window net in the driver's door. Part of the history of Darlington, and again, not, uh, not everything that's happened here has been great over the years, but it did lead to a great safety innovation for the drivers. While we continue to wait out the track drying effort, let's visit with more of the competitors as they kill time during the rain. Matt Yoakum, who you got? Well, Alan, we're already starting a campaign of 1-800-HELP-WARD due to the $5,000 fine. Little Ashton here, he couldn't afford shoes uh, that had fronts on them, and, and Jeb, he doesn't have any shoes at all, so he got Caterpillar boots. So let's talk about the throw last week and the fine. Well, obviously, uh, when you have experiences in life, uh, sometimes, you know, you respond real well to them, and sometimes you do uh, actions that... Uh, Exactly. You'd like to be able to go back and have time to redo them over. Uh, obviously, I was really frustrated and showed my frustration. Still a little bit disturbed about it, but uh, that's in the past. We're going on to this week, and uh, I'll learn from those uh, mistakes I made last week and uh, hopefully behave myself better next time. Well, see, we're letting Ashton try to get involved in the TV business. We're trying to get him to hold the mic. But you couldn't come to a better place to, to get back on track here at Darlington. You've got so much history and success, two wins. Such a neat racetrack. Uh, you know, this track has probably got more history than a Daytona racetrack does. Uh, the folks at Darlington do a super job. We were at the, uh, the governor of South Carolina's mansion uh, on Thursday supporting the event. And it's been fun ever since. Uh, just hoping Mother Nature will cooperate a little bit. Now, what's the story that I heard? When Ward Burton was a young boy, he camped out here with his brother Jeff and, and dad, and you went down the road and chopped down some trees for firewood. Well, actually, dad told uh, myself and my, and my brother Brian to go outside and get some firewood. We got the saw out of the back and, uh, and proceeded to cut down a, a pretty big-sized loblolly pine right beside the motorhome. And actually, it almost crashed on the Winnebago. Dad heard it and came outside and said, what are y'all boys doing? We're getting firewood. But uh, we didn't make somebody in the campground real happy with us that day. But we did get some firewood. Well, that's good. Are you going to make yourself and your team happy today? I mean, your race car was not as great as you would have liked in the final practice session. But it seemed like you were starting to get closer and closer to where you needed it to be. Yeah, we did. i tell you one thing, too. Uh, really proud of my team. They uh, repaired the car that was wrecked at Bristol. There was somebody on that car from Sunday afternoon to Thursday night, 24 hours a day, and I uh, think that they put forth just a gallant effort. Uh, we wasn't really happy with it yesterday morning, but got a lot more satisfied with the car yesterday uh, late in practice and feel like that we'll adjust on all day and have a shot at it. We'll start taking donations for that $5,000 so that way little Ashton can get some shoes and, and possibly Jeb too. Marty? Well, Matt, Bobby Labonte relaxing by his uh, coach, and, uh, you know, you finished ninth at Bristol last week, so with that, before that being the longest top ten drive of your career, I would assume that was the closest ninth ever felt like to a win to you, ever. Well, uh, we had a really good race car all night long, and uh, got a little too tight towards the end of the race, and got back towards the back uh, after we got the fender knocked in, and, you know, just, you know, with it being tight, and uh, just couldn't pass nobody. So, yeah, we had a better race car than we finished, but still a uh, top ten, it has been a long time, so... Uh, you got to crawl before you walk, walk before you run. So that was a good run for us, a good finish for us. And we've been getting a little bit better. Uh, we've been knocking on 10th for a little bit, but, you know, finally got a top 10. Now, uh, you and the rain have always been pretty good here. It worked out for you one time here in 2000, but it may not work out for you today. No, we're not as good as Jeff Burton is. He, he's, he's obviously... <laughs> a little better in the rain than you? Definitely. He's better than everybody in the rain. But, uh, yeah, I mean, in 2000, it did work out in our favor. We had a great race car that day. And the guys in the, on the, in the pit crew and the pit stops that they made, uh, they, they got us out in the lead. And, you know, then we prayed for rain. So uh, it worked out good for us then. But, uh, uh, you know, today... You know, we'll just have to wait and see what happens here. That last stop in 2000 was pretty incredible. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, we came in, and when I was going down pit road, I seen all the guys that were I was racing the top five there, and I seen them. I said, ooh, past him, past him, past him. I said, dang, we're going to be leading here. So uh, so sure enough, after I uh, took the lead there, I think uh, I think it was Burton was behind me on the on the restart there, and we didn't get going, but he knew what the deal was. And 
he, between he and Earnhardt and everybody, they, they come up and ran me one time. Just like we're, they're mad at me because we I outdid them on the pit stop. But uh, I guess Rick Mass probably was the one that was probably the maddest because yeah, he should have stayed out. Yeah. yeah, I know the season has been frustrating for you guys, Bobby. And I know when things are going not going well, every team contemplates changes. But it's, it's so hard for you guys to make changes because this is basically the team that won the championship. Well, yeah, but the changes we have to make are, you know, just to keep up with what other people are doing. I mean, the, the sport has changed and as far as, uh, you know, our setups and stuff like that goes. I mean, that's I think that always is changing uh, to a certain extent. And, uh, you know, we just have to retrain our thought process on, on trying to figure that out. I have to help them out as far as what feedback, what I can give them. And, I mean, that, and then they have to work on, uh, you know, what to do the race car to make it feel better. So we got to work together at it, and that's the only way you can do it. But, uh, you know, the things that you hear and the things that I see on the racetrack that our car, not only our car does, but what other people do, uh, try to give back all the information we can and get kind of get back with the times. You know, uh, what worked uh, yesterday is not going to work today. That, that kind of like a saying like that. Other than TNT and NBC, I know your favorite channel is the Weather Channel. So uh, we're going to get this thing in today? Uh, yes. I could call Jim Cantori right now. Yeah, let's go get the cell phone and call Jim Cantori, the meteorologist there. And I feel pretty sure he would tell me, uh, no. Come on, Bobby. Uh, close? You wanted me to lie to you, right? Yeah, lie. Benny likes us to lie when it comes to weather. Uh, you've been here for three days, too, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's his answer. Just telling you what I see. <laughs> Definite maybe. Dave?